Hi, I'm Dave, welcome to the channel and welcome to another and probably the last video about the very cheap Polycar home set WRX. Now, if you've been following along with this, I bought these because they were cheap, £22.50 each. And I've fiddled about with them, tuned them up a bit, added a couple of extra bits to this in the last video, did a motor and gear swap and put some lovely staff slot wheels on. Now, I did say at the time there was a little bit more to be done, including some better tyres on the back. Now, here are a set of PCS RT04 F22 tyres from Pendle Slot, although they do have NSR written on them. But hey ho, they're probably NSR tyres. They're great. So those will go on. They are slightly bigger diameter than these ones. The other thing I said I was going to do was I said I'd got another project that I was going to take some brass bushings out of because these cars have plastic bushings in the front and I could replace them. Now the other project is in fact my Legends white kit and I'm going to put some offset staff slots bearings in that when we get to this one. So I have got the four brass bearings out of there. So two for this car and two for the other one that I've modified. And I'm going to attempt to do a slotting plus guide swap because this guide is not brilliant. It's quite wobbly. Yeah. So this is the SP101001 Universal Standard RKS Guide from Slotting Plus. Seven millimeters deep. Should work with most things. And my favorite replacement guide for most cars. Now it could be a bit tricky to fit in this, but I have got from Wirral Slot Racing some guide adapters. Now these are primarily used for converting the terrible guide system on a scale electric car. I don't know if that's focused, but it's a little quadrant with a circle and a tube in it. And normally you would glue this into the bottom of a scale electric car, which will allow you to put one of these guides in. I'm going to have to do a bit of fiddling around here because this isn't quite going to work. I'm going to need a couple of them and I'll explain why as we go along. And the other thing I'm going to do is fit a bit of my favourite Slotting Plus standard 035 tin plated braid SP103142. I find this works really well on my Carrera track with the rails, with the slight M shapes in them and things that we've discussed before. So slotting plus guide, slotting plus braid, a little adapter, some Pioneer bearings and some NSR stroke pendle tyres. That's the job for today and we're going to see if this improves the car at all. So I've removed the body. You don't need to see me removing the body off this car again. I've done this quite a few times. So the first thing I'm going to do is attempt to replace the guide. But in order to do that, I might as well just pop this axle out of here. As you can see, those are the plastic bushings in the front that I'm going to be replacing with these brass ones. But we'll put that to one side for a minute. Concentrate on this new Slotting Plus guide. As you can see, the kit comes with the guide, a little screw to go in the top of the guide, and a couple of finials, as you'd expect, to hold the wires in. And as I said, I've got these Wirral Slot Racing guide conversions. And the idea is that fits perfectly on there with no slop and you glue the guide conversion to the chassis. Now that's easier in a scale electric car and in fact Pendle make a kit which is effectively some of these and some of these all together to convert a scale electric car with. We have to do a bit more with this slotted one. 
First off, we need to get the old one out, which is, yet again, just a screw in the top. And I don't know if you can see it. There's a little pip in there. And I need, in order to get this guide out of here, you need to kind of get it off the pip. There we are. And then as we're here, and these are screwed in here, we'll take these out. Now this guide should, the blade slides out from the other bit of mechanism. I'm gonna keep the blade for the time being. Got another use for that. So obviously these wires will need to be stripped back, the terminal's taken off, just stripped back to bare wire to fit the new guide. So we'll get to that again in a minute. We'll put those bits out of the way. Now this guide hole itself is huge. So if I were to center this up with the hole, it's not quite going to fit. There's a gap just there. But that's not the end of the world. Another interesting thing about this that I discovered is this guide conversion will actually fit quite snugly in that top hole. Which means if I use a three and a half millimeter drill bit which will go through that hole. I can put another one of these guide conversions on the bottom. And then when I stand that up like that, I know for definite that the guide post is still gonna be in the middle and dead upright when I glue these pieces in. Which brings me to the old guide blade. Because this is slightly too small, I don't know if I can do this on camera, for this hole, I'm going to use this guide blade and modify it up a little bit so it's a flatter thing. And I'm going to glue it in here to join this piece to this piece and hold it in the right place. That's the plan anyway. I've just kind of looked at the bits and worked this out. So hopefully this will work and this will be the way to put a better guide in one of these cheap Polycar WRXs. We'll see how that goes, and I'll come back in a bit, but I've done a bit of fiddling about with some of these things to make it all fit, and let you know what I did. Okay, I've got this all fixed now. So let me just talk you through what I did. I took the guide blade, shaved the fat section off the end of it, and then cut it into two, and I had two pieces, which I then glued to the guide adapter, and then putting that back into the jig with a three and a half mil drill bit, I managed to line it up and glue it into place with some super glue on the chassis. And then I just ran the three and a half mil drill bit back through here again, just to clearance very slightly. If I put this here, you might be able to see it. And there is the guide blade now in place, adapter now in place. Another one glued in on the top that's not gonna go anywhere. And here is my slotting plus guide, which will now fit beautifully into there. Plenty of movement. I can pop the screw in the top. There we are. And now that 
as you can see, is a guide blade with no movement, unlike the other one. I can put a little bit of this braid on, connect the wires up, and that bit will be done. So I'll do that, and then I'll come back again. So here I am back again, with all my braids in place, my wires in. That guide's going to be just fine. So all that remains is put the rear tyres on. I'm not going to put the fronts on. They don't matter. It'll be fine the way it is. But I am going to put these brass bushings in the front of here. So let's take the wheel off. Remove those plastic bushings. We'll put these metal ones on. And I'll just pop the wheel back on roughly for now. Now these bearings need to sit, bushings, not bearings, need to sit in there like that. But before I do that, I'm going to get a little bit of alcohol and a cotton bud. Just use that to degrease these holes. There might be some grease in here from where I oiled the plastic bushings before, and we don't want that interfering with the super glue when I glue the bearings in. So just a little tiny dab of the thick super glue. In there and in there. And now I'll just leave that alone for a bit. And once it's dried up, that'll be good to go. I just need to pop this wheel out a little bit, which will give that a bit more freedom. So I will put some oil in there once everything's all set up nicely. And just rear tyres, which are rear tyres. These ones you'll note are considerably bigger than the other ones because I had a little bit of rear ground clearance issue having put these wheels on. So stickier, larger rubber for the backs. Now these are super soft tyres, there's no point trying to put these on a tyre true, I don't think. I'm just going to scuff them up a little bit with some very fine sandpaper on the track just to make sure they're round and then run it. So I'll let this dry, oil up the front so it frees up a little bit, put it all back together and then we'll go to the track. So here we are at the track, and as you can see immediately, this car's lovely. It's like it's on rails. The, uh, the new sticky rear tyres really have helped. That slight extra increase in diameter has helped with the clearance issues and obviously much stickier tyres. But the thing is, the much stickier tyres 
and the guide mean the car stays in the slot better, which means it has a lot more lateral cornering force that the, the chassis and everything can cope with. Unfortunately, it's still a very top heavy car. That body shell is tall and there's quite a lot of weight in the top of it. So before I ran it on here, full disclosure, I found it was kind of getting to a corner and barrel rolling off in a straight line because the, the back tires were digging in and then it would just lift. So I added a little bit of radius to the outside of the rear tires and I added a little bit more weight to the car right at the very, very back. Uh, and that's really sorted it out. I mean, this is a proper nippy little car now. It's, it's turned into the sort of car you can just come in after work and stick on the track and have a good old hoon about with and, and not worry about it because obviously it's built like a tank. It's, it's not going to break. You can really throw it around. And now with all of the modifications on it, it really will let you throw it around. It's turned into a really, really enjoyable car to drive. And you may remember in the previous video when I'd done the wheels and the motor conversion, I was a little disappointed that the fastest time I managed to get out of it was a 6.1 second. Although it was pretty much a second faster than before I'd changed the wheels and the motor. But it was disappointing for me because it wasn't under that six second mark that for me is the good car, bad car kind of borderline on this track. Well, I'm pleased to tell you that with the stickier, larger tires and with the guide conversion, we've gone from 6.106 seconds down to a 5.825. So we are comfortably now inside the good car boundary and it will consistently lap in the 5.9s and into the 5.8s. It's a very, oops. As always, thanks for watching one of my videos. If you liked it, you will find a button specifically for that. Please subscribe to the channel. It really does help the algorithm and it's free. And if you hit the bell, you'll get a notification the next time I post a video. And as always, check out this slot car channel.